Hey everybody, welcome back. So today starts episode two of our Now Monitor series, and we're going to be talking about hatchlings today. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time going into what their life is like in the wild, getting started. And we're going to spend a lot more time kind of talking about what we can expect um, as keepers if you bring in a Now Monitor hatchling and then look at how it progresses into adulthood, some of the challenges that we've got, um, and just really try and express a, a realistic picture of what it's like to keep one of these because it can be really easy to get suckered into one of these cute little lizards um, but we've got to do so with the understanding that these guys their requirements their size their temperament's going to change everything's going to change as they grow up so it's all stuff that we got to talk about if we're going to talk about niles so you won't want to go anywhere we'll be right back on intrepid exotics whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Okay guys, so if you missed the first video, I'll link it in the end screen. You can go back and check it out. Um, just a really brief recap. Uh, it was just kind of an introduction of what Nile monitors are, um, where they come from. You know, they're, they're an African monitor species, they're semi-aquatic, um, and they're arguably one of, among the most intelligent reptiles, um, definitely among the most intelligent lizards on the planet. But <clears throat> Mother Nature has a way of pulling a fast one on us from time to time, and I think she does it with just about every species. You know, we're not, <clears throat> we're not immune to this ourselves. Um, you know, if you're looking at a human baby, they're all cute and cuddly and adorable, but the end result of that is by the time they grow up, they just end up being really bad drivers and messing your day up in the end. And it's not much different with some species of reptiles or animals in general. You know, you go into a pet store and you see this little lizard who's just absolutely adorable and he's in a little enclosure and you just gotta have him and you don't realize that sooner or later you're really going to have your hands full and you're going to need a bigger box. Which is why I thought this was a really good way to format this video. Now this is what Niles looked like right after I had first gotten him. He's so cute, so cuddly, so easy to manage and you can see here just a fraction of the size of what he is today. Um, again, they love the water. They're very adept swimmers. Um, you've definitely got to have a large enough water source for him there. And you can see too that he's in there with a mangrove monitor. When they're young, they cohab pretty easily. Um, you don't see too many instances really of bad stuff happening between young Nile monitors. Um, they're pretty easy to work with. I ended up adopting out the mangrove monitor there simply because I knew I wasn't going to have really enough space here to, to manage both of them as they grew up. But they can be really easy to manage. Um, as young lizards <clears throat> you can see here there's not much of a threat to me at all yeah he's a smaller lizard even if he does get a hold of me he decides to bite me um, he's not gonna do a whole lot of damage and this is the point in time where we want to spend a good deal of time working with these guys spend a lot of time with them um, they can be really skittish to begin with but we can mitigate that some by using food letting them you know, getting used to tongue feeding and things of that nature so they can um, start to get used to us. We spend a lot of time close to their enclosure and so forth. Now you're going to find when these Nile monitors are young, they're so much fun. You really don't have anything to worry about, you know, as long as you're, you know, not imposing on them, you're, you're respecting them and you're not chasing them around the enclosure and so forth. You're letting them come to you. These animals are smart enough to where you know, they will actually start to bond with you to some degree. Um, you know, you can definitely use um, tongue feeding as a way of luring them out and then they start to associate you with something positive. And the more time you spend like that with them, the, the better the bond, the better the trust is going to be with them and everything. But as they age, you know, their temperament's going to change a little bit, their space requirements are going to change. Um, you know, these guys both started with Niles and the mangrove monitor in a, in a four foot enclosure with a water bowl. It was just fine for these guys and they were small. 
I ended up getting bumped up into a six foot enclosure after I'd adopted out the mangrove so he had all that space to himself and then after that we added a bathtub to the enclosure, added some vertical space, added some more platforms and things like that and just continued to expand for him and now we're at the point where I'm getting ready to frame in some walls and actually make a small room for this guy um, and it's going to be just for him by himself he's pushing five and a half feet long right now so as you can see you know these guys start off really small and cute and tiny but their requirements over a pretty brief period of time are just going to continually increase and increase and the amount of time that you have to spend on these guys too uh, you've really got to make sure that you're spending your time socializing them and working with them and being in their presence and making sure that they stay comfortable with you now as these guys start to get bigger um, they're to be taken a lot more seriously um, as they start to put you know some weight on some length on you know their jaws are going to get bigger and stronger their claws are going to get longer um, you know you'll hear sometimes that you know as the hormonal changes and stuff they may get a little bit snippy they may get um, a little bit more temperamental uh, sometimes they can be really really territorial and really not adjust well sometimes to like enclosure changes and stuff like that I know Niles um, when I upgraded his enclosure it's been a couple weeks where he was really wigged out about it um, and was just really skittish and standoffish and whatnot uh, so hopefully when this next next enclosure change comes along um, he deals with it a little bit better I know I'm gonna spend as much time with him as I can trying to trying to ease the transition and whatnot for him but uh, you know they do ultimately take a lot of space and they take a lot of patience and you know they they can be really tricky to deal with just because of the fact that they can be really reactive you know like I said they're they're really highly intelligent lizards but they're naturally reactive so of course you know we've got to be on our game when we're working with these guys um, making sure that we're not doing anything to spoil the relationship that we've got with them because without that relationship without that trust with that animal um, they get really difficult to manage as they get bigger now you're gonna see some of them that are just puppy dog tame and they're really super mellow um, most of the time when I'm working with Niles he's really chill he allows me to mess with him I can pick him up I can interact with him and so forth and he does really well but there's also times where I may go in there and if he's really hungry if he's scenting food on me or something like that from when I was feeding somebody else um, yeah his ears can perk up uh, metaphorically speaking of course but they will definitely under the right circumstances take a nip at you so a really good incentive to maintain a really positive relationship with your animal and make sure that they trust you and make sure you're spending time with them is all four corners of that animal will put a hurting on you. Um, they will not hesitate to bite. They've got four feet, four sets of claws that'll lay you open and that tail is nothing to be trifled with. Uh, when an adult Nile monitor lets loose with that tail, uh, he's gonna leave a welt wherever he hits you at. Now one reason that I kinda go out and, and wanted to follow this all the way up through adulthood is because you'll see it a lot of times um, with novice reptile keepers whether it be with uh, big snakes big lizards and so forth you get them when they're young you get them when they're small you work with them they're real easy to work with because you're not afraid of them because they can't really hurt you and then as they start to get bigger if people don't grow with that animal and their handling skills don't improve as the animal grows and they don't put any effort to keep them socialized and keep working with them and so forth then you can really easily separate and now that animal is getting more difficult to manage <clears throat> and if the person's skill level isn't growing with the animal um, then it kind of exponentially um, spreads that chasm between between the pet and the owner um, because the more um, the more hesitant the owner is to interact with the animal the less interaction it gets um, and the less socialized it becomes and so forth so it's one of the things that's really important 
if you're going to get one of these guys is it's a commitment that you've got to stay on top of. Um, like I said, you just can't put it in there and play with it until it gets big and then leave it alone. Because uh, then you're definitely going to have your hands full. And you're looking at a 20 year commitment when you get one of these guys. And most of that time, that animal is going to be a mature adult. Uh, which is why it's so important that if you're going to get one, you really foster that relationship with them and, and work to work to really build trust with them. Because there's going to come a point in time where you're going to depend on that trust uh, when you've got to handle and manage the animal and so forth. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea about what you know what you would expect starting out with them um, and how easy it is to fall in love with these guys when they're small, um, and then how important it is that if you're going to do that when they're small, they it just of the utmost importance that you follow through and you continue to grow with them uh, and you keep building your skills and your confidence level and everything because they can be a challenge and they're certainly not something unless you're going to be completely devoted um, to learning how to manage this animal then go for something easier. Uh, Niles are probably among the least recommended monitors for pets you know there's tree monitors there's ackies and even asian water monitors that get larger are known to be a little bit easier to work with and i actually know some people who are breeding some asian water monitors now um, that are actually smaller in stature so it makes them you know even that much that much more appealing uh, because you're getting that asian water monitor temperament and you know a little bit less of the size make them a little bit easier to manage that way but I hope this was informative for you guys. Um, like I said, I just kind of wanted to show going from hatchling stage all the way up to adult and what you can kind of expect with it. Um, we're going to be going in the future into feeding, which is really pretty simple with these guys. Um, if, it's, if it's meat or eggs, it'll eat it. Um, alive, dead, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're pretty much biological garbage disposals. So they will eat anything. Uh, but there's some things to keep in mind. So we're going to go into feeding, we're going to go into enclosures, and we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about socializing with these guys uh, in the future, in future episodes. So keep an eye out for that. Don't forget, guys, like the videos, get down in the comments. We're still early in the series. If you've got anything that you want to see in the future, let me know. I'll make sure to drop it in there. And um, get subscribed to the channel. Keep up to date when things come out. So you guys... Have an outstanding day, and I will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.